um, <laughs> describe and analyze a um, lesser known or lesser documented language. So, for example, uh, last spring they, uh, they looked at the Ethiopian language called Milan, and this spring we're, uh, <laughs> we're analyzing a uh, language from northwestern China, a uh, Turkic language called Uyghur, or yeah, in my language we call it Uyghur, but in English it's Uyghur. There we go. Alright, so in this class, uh, we're not just looking at the language, but looking at the language, but also field method techniques to learn how we might be able to do this in the future looking forward um, as field linguists are uh, documenting other languages. And so we're kind of developing those ideas and learning new techniques and how to um, describe the language using the International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA, um, to break down sounds from it and then get into uh, syntax, morphology, etc. cetera. Um, so now uh, Ziva's gonna talk to you about the actual language itself, um, and then we're gonna just do a little demonstration where we have her say some words, and we're gonna write them in IPA to show you guys kind of what we do in class as well as outside of class to get even more data. Uh, welcome guys. Um, so my language, uh, we call it Uyghurji and then it's a kind of Turkic language. So it's spoken by 12 to 25 million people and it's major uh, to speak in the northwestern part of, part of China called Xinjiang, I guess, whether or not you guys know it. So it's actually the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. So the, uh, the first language there is Uyghur. But normally we now speak Chinese and Uyghur as well. And then it's um, uh, Islamic culture. So most of our cultures is like related to Islam and then we are all Muslims. And then, <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of like Kurluk part branching of the Turkic language and then it's a SOE subject, object and verb order and what else should I add? <laughs> yeah, if you have questions you can just ask me so that I can answer you about the language. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and um, as we're doing this, um, our group member Nick over here, if you have any extra just side questions, just Shoot a glance towards him and he'll kind of give you some, some little insight um, as we're just actually eliciting um, words and stuff out of her. So, in uh, the elicitation process, we usually like to, um, we'll have her say the word and then we'll talk about that word and kind of try to break down the phonology a little bit so that when we record it, we have an idea of what we're getting when we're going in. So we kind of break it down a lot and actually listen to her. Um, and then when we actually do the recording, we do three um, utterances of the same word. Um, and so she'll say a word, we say the translation in English, or the gloss in English, and then she says the other word two more times after that. In order to, when you're saying a word in isolation and in a list, there's like different intonation that ends up happening. Um, and because of that, we want it to say, be said a few times so that it's not, we're not making judgments based on this like list intonation that she would be making. Okay, so our first word's gonna be fire. Ot. 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 Yeah, it's as green. Purun, yeah. Purun, Purun, trail or plant? Purun, 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 And then we have the vowel harmony, so most of the word is like, yeah, we have the same vowel. Like, leaf, it's yupurma, so it's all capital Y, like yupurma, yeah. unless the last vowel, yeah. Our third word's gonna be laos. Laos, it's psit, psit, it's the... Yeah. 
sheet P I So the interesting part about this word that we um, just elicited is we've been having a lot of debate about this in class because there is this um, interesting thing going on at the beginning of the word in which we think there may or may not be a vowel in between the um, first and second consonant. So it might be a syllable and we're really trying to like dig into that. There's a bunch of words that we've been um, finding that have this similar pattern. Um, so that's why we were kind of laughing up here because it's a difficult one that we're still not quite sure on. Um, Idea-wise, uh, whether or not this uh, this vowel in the first first part of the word actually is there. So, okay, our fourth word is going to be you uh, plural, so you all. It's slap. Yeah, slap, slap. Actually, when you write it, there's e after s, c, la, but when you say it, it's like la, the s and l, it's like combined together. We were just discussing this one, like, should we put like a short e between s and l? Yeah. Slap. All right, so we're going to record these these now, so we have um, something actually permanent of these um, in our system. So. So now we're going to do um, a verb form so that you can see how the verb works together with, uh, with different pronouns and uh, just the general makeup of a regular verb, um, not an irregular verb. <laughs> so not to throw everything off when you look at that box. So we're going to do the verb to go, which is pronounced. Beatish. 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 You polite form. So for second singular, we have um, polite form and the normal one. So the polite form it says use with the elder people or the people you just met. And then the normal one like sen it's used with close friends, but it's usually like more better. To, oh, it's better to use the polite form for girls in general. But when you talk to guys, you can say just send. Yeah, they can accept it. Slar, slar, parmachi. Slar. Or slar, par slar, it's okay. Slar. Slar. Par slar. Par slar, yeah. 
Ular Paredu It's they are going Ular So lar it's our plural form So whenever you add plural form you just add lar as the suffix Like Adam it's people so a uh, person and then people it's like Adam lar Alma it's apple Almlar like that